Good morning and good to have you with us here on the special broadcast. It's the D-Day for Bihar. Today we get to find out who will be governing Bihar for the next five years. One hour left before the counting officially begins in the state to find out whether it will be the NDA that returns to power under the leadership of Nitish Kumar or whether Mahagad Bandhan will now get a chance under the leadership of Tejashwi Yadav. This is the first election, remember, the first elections that were held Amidst a pandemic, amidst coronavirus pandemic, I'm Tanvi Shukla, good morning to you. My team and I are all set to take you through this exciting roller coaster ride of political upsets and turnarounds. This will be a big referendum on Nitish Kumar's 15-year-old rule. Tough fight for him, tough task for him, an uphill challenge. On the other side is just 31-year-old youngster. Though he comes from a big political family, there's a huge amount of political baggage. But he is hoping that the voters give him chance basis of who he is and the change that he promises. We've got an expert set of panelists lined up here in the studios. They're going to be with us through the day with me and Vinay in the studios with their insights. So as the results begin to come in post AM, 8 AM, our panelists will help us understand and analyze those results. We'll also have Aarti Subramanian standing by in the newsrooms with all the latest updates on the screen the numbers that she will decode for us. But first up, let's go across to Ayushman, who's joining us live from Patna. Of course, those are the visuals that are coming on your screens, which are actually of the LJP workers who are holding a havan this morning, hoping they, they get to play a bigger role than what the exit polls have suggested. Vira, let's start with you. Um, the exit polls seem to have tilted it in favour of the Mahagat Bandhan. Of course, there are a few uh, within the JDU and BJP still saying that, no, we don't give importance to these polls. But uh, even on ground, the sense is that maybe it's time for a change. It seems so. And <coughs> I mean, But I, I just wanted to add one caveat to it. The time for the change means that, yes, it seems to be curtains for Nitish Kumar for sure. Uh, there is no question about that. Uh, in fact, we've been talking about it. My personal assessment sense seems to be that they might end up number three in the, in the race. But I'm still saying so, and I, and I waited to say this till Tuhin arrived here. <laughs> Don't rule out the BJP to play a trick post the results. Do not rule them out. It can happen. Uh, there is a JDU which is in a confused state of mind because their leader suddenly started saying it's his last election. Uh, there is a vacuum that most of the people or followers of JDU might believe will happen going forward. Uh, and I'm still saying that while seemingly <coughs> the RJD and Congress are in a poll position right now, according to the pollsters, do not underestimate the BJP's uh, you know, ability to carve out something out of complete thin air and it can well happen. So it's very interesting times ahead and I think <coughs> at 8 o'clock when the count up, today is also the IPL final. Yes. Uh, so much like a 2020 game, the power play that happens in the first six overs, which will be like the 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. period, should not be taken that seriously. Those, that's the time when things <laughs> change very rapidly. I think it's only the middle overs. So 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. you're going the, to be giving us play. updates on part. election results. And then 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. you'll also be giving us updates the on the IPL. The IPL <laughs> okay, so that's how it's going to be. Winners agreed to give us updates on both of these results. Both include, uh, well, uh, people linked to Delhi Daredevils. Delhi Daredevils in the finals and their former cricketer who ne actually never got to play the in, in the final playing level, but was part of the team for a really long time. His results also come out today. And that's what we'll find out actually sooner. Let's also say good morning to the other panelists who are with us this morning. Tuhin Sinha, author and BJP leader with us in the studios. I've also got Mr. Nilanjan Mukhopadhyay uh, joining us right now. And of course, Mr. Sanjay Singh, he was with us on Pole of Pole Days as well. So good morning to everybody. Thank you morning. so much. Morning. Welcome to the Mirror Now studios. Um, Sanjay, let's begin with you. We had the initial round of conversations about, you know, Pole of Poles three set of polls that we analyze and uh, two of them gave a very clear uh, you know win for the uh, Mahagat Bandhan but do you agree with Vinay that when it comes to the BJP you never know? First thing I agree with Vinay when he said uh, about the Trider mm. 8 to 10 a.m. <laughs> on two situations I was there on the ground and also uh, in, uh, on other occasion in the studio when there were celebrations A in Gujarat 
in 2007 in Congress camps that Congress is winning 8 to 10 a.m. and suddenly scene changed. Right. And what happens thereafter that leaders who are celebrating or the party workers who are celebrating, they suddenly vanish. And then you start realizing that senior leaders have completely gone underground. And same thing happened in last Bihar elections when initial projections said that BJP is leading and suddenly the whole election results changed. See, so far as uh, BJP pulling the trick, all depends on the kind of numbers that BJP may get and uh, uh, will get today. BJP's strike rate in Bihar has been very good, uh, much <coughs> better than JDU. So, so far BJP, uh, some, uh, BJP has given 11 seats to uh, VIP, Mukesh Sani's uh, son of Mallah, his party. So, let us see uh, how much BJP scores. Because uh, if BJP's uh, scorecard is good, but only if their numbers to play, if in a this is broadly a bipolar election. Yeah. So if this is close and something is happening, then um, there is another thing. Uh, <coughs> uh, the secular communal angle will also come post-election. Nobody, of course, is talking about now. So. Um, Let's hold our horses mm. <laughs> for now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Quick poll on the other side of the table. Uh, are we holding our horses? Do you think that there's always a chance for a slip between the cup and the lip? Of course, there is, you know, but just adding on to this 8 to 10 a.m., you know, I must <laughs> remind everybody that 8 to 10 a.m. is also the time in India where we first count the postal ballots. That's right. It's completely different from the other election which everybody was watching, which was the, the, other the around, correct. U.S. elections, you know, where it is at the end. Yes. So, uh, you know, we really can't go by what is what comes <coughs> out by 10 a.m., you know, these days, especially after the EVMs came in in 99 and from 2004, you know, in all the states and in the entire country. Uh, the middle overs, as you said, you know, is actually when we'll really get a picture as to what we finally have in this house. I think it's going to be very important. I see this election as very important for the BJP. It has been said so far, you know, the general argument has been that if the NDA wins, it will win because of Mr. Modi. If it loses, it will be because of Nitish Kumar. But I think, you know, if the NDA does not do very well, then uh, there will be, uh, you know, equal number of problems for the BJP because it would mean, you know, continuation of a slip, you know, which has been happening after the 2019 Lok Sabha elections. We have had not a very good re result in Maharashtra, in Haryana, they just kind of scraped through. Jharkhand, they, lo they lost power. In Delhi, they did not do very well, despite the expectations. And uh, if uh, they don't do very well in Bihar, then it would mean that uh, the era of uh, political backlash is possibly beginning to come up. It's going to be just like what was there in 2015. If you recall, 2015 was a very bad year for <coughs> Uh, Mr. Modi personally and the BJP. So if Bihar does not go the NDA way, then they'll have to think of ways to really improve their prospects for the next parliamentary election. <coughs> One thing, of course, is that they may have to think if it doesn't go their <coughs> way is the uh, alliance part, Tuhin. But even if you keep the alliance separately, all of the exit polls have shown a strengthening uh, and a gain for BJP by itself. Well, absolutely. You know, last year, Nitish Kumar had coined a very interesting slogan, Ab kahe kare vichar, jab thike to hai Nitish Kumar. This time it seems to be, Ab kahe kare vichar, thike to hai NDA sarkar. Mm. So I think, yes, driven by BJP, the, the alliance will get across. You see, the calculation is very simple. BJP needs to win a minimum of two-thirds of its seats, which it is contesting, which it should. It yeah. should very well get go beyond 70% of the seats uh, which it is contesting. And uh, JDU needs to win one-third, minimum one-third of its seats. So if JDU manages one-third of its seats which it is contesting, which is 40 out of 120, then we are through. And that is what uh, a likely situation seems to be. I would, however, li like on Saturday, put my figure at 135. Oh, you're least. still sticking to that? Yeah, yeah, I'm sticking to that. Okay. <laughs> we are keeping that in mind then. 135 is what Tuhin had said even on Saturday. I want to just quickly go across to Ayushman, who I believe is outside Tejasvi's residence and has got some interesting um, voices for us. Ayushman? <laughs> Yes, uh, Tanvi, in fact, uh, I, I wanted you to come here because uh, I've got a uh, common voter out here who is not an RJD supporter and he has got some valid points to make, sir. Uh, 
एग्जिट पोल्स ने कह दिया है कि जीत इधर हो रही है आप एज अ कॉमन मैन इसको कैसे देखते हैं एंटिसिपेशन क्या है आज पब्लिक जो है या व्यापारी वर्ग जो है उसके मन में दस्खत है कि कहीं फिर से वो वैसा कुछ तो नजर नहीं आएगा डर है डर है डर है लोगों में क्योंकि उस दिन को लोग भूल नहीं पा रहे हैं भूल नहीं पा रहे जब मिथिला मोटर से गाड़ियां निकल रही थी जब डॉक्टर्स के किडनैप हो रहे थे तो उस दिन को लोग भूल नहीं पा रहे और फिर एक डर अंदर लगा हुआ है कहीं वो दिन फिर वापस नहीं आ जाए ये जब बोलते हैं तेजस्वी यादव कि सेलिब्रेशन बड़ा नॉर्मल होना चाहिए लगता है कि एक जो जो बैगेज है वो उतर पाया है या फिर अभी भी वो डर बना रहता है नहीं वो डर कहीं ना कहीं है कि खून में तो असर होगा उसका खून में तो असर होगा उसका ऐसा लगता है अपील उसको काम नहीं कर रही है वहाँ ना डर है डर है लेकिन इस बार का चुनाव जैसा पब्लिक को लगता है कि ये बूढ़े वर्सेज युवा का चुनाव है एक तरफ नीति नीतीश जी हैं और सुशील मोदी हैं तो दूसरे तरफ तेजस्वी यादव हैं चाहे चिराग पासवान हैं या पुष्पम प्रिया है ये तीनों युवा हैं तो ये लड़ाई एक पीढ़ी दर पीढ़ी की लड़ाई भी एक, एक जल्दी से कमेंट चाहूँगा आपका आप बताए थे नीतीश कुमार के बारे में नीतीश कुमार से इतना डिसकंटेंट और साथ ही साथ आपने कहा जो आखिरी चुनाव की बात उन्होंने कही एक मतदाता के रूप में कैसे देखा आपने उसको जब नीतीश ने अनाउंस किया कि ये मेरा ये मेरा आखिरी चुनाव है तो ऐसा लगने लगा कि ये डूबता सूरज है अब डूबते सूरज को कौन पूजा करेगा जो जिसका आखिरी अंत आ गया है उससे तो अच्छा है कि नए घोड़े पर दांव लगाया जाए आपने मास्क भी लगा रखा या नॉर्मली लोग मास्क नहीं लगाते कोविड को लेकर जो रिस्पॉन्स था सरकार का वो कैसा था उसको कैसे आप सरकार का रिस्पांस तो ठीक था लेकिन कोविड का रिस्पांस अच्छा नहीं है वो तो बढ़ते जा रहा है अच्छा। इसलिए मास्क तो बहुत जरूरी है मास्क जरूरी है दूरी जरूरी है नीतीश कुमार वॉज अनपॉपुलर बट दिस इज अ फियर that is there in the back of the mind that something sort of jungle raj may also return once rjd come into power okay that's an interesting comment uh, they are coming in from a voter but ayushman tell me now you've been traveling through the state of bihar throughout the election season why do people of bihar believe they're invincible and immune to covid and don't need to wear masks Uh, well tanvi uh, uh, there are uh, many 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 theories on ground when you come uh, there was a point when i was in jammu and there was one person who said that uh, there is a, the combination of chromosome in corona virus is not known then i had to tell him that there is no chromosome in virus uh, the theories are that uh, not such uh, corona virus is there in ground people are immune by nature and that is why they don't wear mask if you see around me i don't want to go to that crowd but this is how people stand here the problem is everybody gathers at a point and nobody follows the social distancing this remains a bigger challenge out here tanvi yeah uh, and i've seen that repeatedly you know from the rallies even to the counting day now people gathering outside they just we residents nobody is even bothered or scared it's not even a talking point you look at the voter turnout it's pretty much the same as you see every assembly election uh, so it's not obviously played uh, on the minds of people aishwan thanks so much we will keep coming back to you before i take this back to our, uh, 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 you, you know our, our panelists Let me just quickly also go across to Arthi Subramaniam for a quick look at some of the uh, interesting visuals and imagery that we saw this election season. Arthi, well, Tanvi, one thing has been completely constant as you were mentioning. It's the absence of masks and a devil may care attitude amongst the Bihari voters when it comes to COVID. But as far as the campaigning <coughs> itself is it concerned, these are the five most uh, defining images. The first one is that of Nitish Kumar being the angry uh, campaigner. We've seen two specific instances. One when there was an onion thrown at him at a rally, and he said, "Or fake, oh, or fake." Oh. It was very angry, Nitish Kumar. The other one was at a rally of his when uh, somebody. 
police are cheering on Lalu Prasad Yadav. He said, don't vote for me if you want, but leave right now. So it's a Nitish Kumar like you haven't seen before. He's angry, he's aloof, and he's hitting out at people. That's one of the most defining moments, certainly, of this campaign. Uh, the second most defining moment of this campaign is the Yuvraj and Rang Jungle Raj jibe. Now, the Prime Minister has an ability to come up with certain catchy themes. And uh, this one, Jungle Raj and double Yuvraj, as well as his the next defining moment as well, which is uh, his double engine ki sarkar uh, comments. So, they're catchy phrases, the Jungle Raj versus Yuvraj comments. But will that actually catch on? Uh, so, two Yuvraj and Jungle Raj jibes by the Prime Minister, as well as the next one, which is uh, the double engine sarkar uh, uh, comment that the Prime Minister had made. That is also a, kind of a very defining moment of this election campaigning that we've seen. Uh, Speaking of catchy slogans, it is Tejasvi Yadav's Padai Kamai Sichai and Dawai. That has become the theme, the running theme of his campaigning wherever he goes when he's asked about anything. This is the only thing that he reiterates, a clear shift in the narratives that he's trying to put forward. And finally, uh, Modi's Hanuman and Nitish's nemesis, that's right, that's Chirag Paswan who said, Main Modi ka, uh, Modi ke liye main Hanuman who uh, he's made it very clear that in his heart he carries Modi in a very dramatic, filmy style perhaps which I can't quite um, uh, you know reenact he said that 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 he's got Modi in his heart just like Hanuman did uh, for Ram so these are the five most catchy most uh, most highlight worthy moments from the campaigning this election all right Aarti thanks so much for you know, putting those uh, 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 defining moments together along with those visuals of course a uh, quick refresher course there um, let's start off with the last one winner uh, and that's Chirag Paswa now, the exit polls don't seem to be giving him too much uh, or uh, don't seem to be uh, showing too much of uh, excitement for him, whatever he was expecting. Yeah, because exit polls will not capture how much vote cutting you will do. They can yeah. only capture how many <laughs> yeah. seats you will get, right? So, ultimately, the game here wasn't really about winning seats. The game was something else. Now, Correct. whether it was being too clever by half or whether it's a strategy that may work, we will know in yeah. another five or six hours. But clearly there was a strategy and however much the BJP may deny, they were part of the strategy. I have a sense and my sense is that they kind of figured out that the strategy may not exactly be going to the script that they had thought of halfway through. Yeah. But it was too late by then, I think. Uh, if you see the way tickets have been distributed, if you see the seats on which it's contesting, if you see the kind of people who've been given tickets, there is more than just an imprint <coughs> of an over-ambitious young leader. Uh, I can't see Chirag Paswan to be so politically wily and so much of an efficient negotiator that he was able to, you know, do what he's doing, where he's professing love for one part partner and, you know, hatred for the other, so much so that he wants to put Nitish in jail. That's what he's been saying all along. So, it's a, it's a peculiar strategy. Uh, it's a strategy that can boomerang very badly as well, but it can also play, pay its dividends. I mean, I think that's the one big X factor that I'm very interested in watching as we go along in the race. But market. how does it work, uh, Mr. Ranjan, that uh, you are asking somebody to vote for one party, but not other and they're together in an alliance. Isn't it a risky gamble? Even if we had to say that the BJP did plan this and was behind it, that the, the Kada was uh, campaigning for LJP, uh, their own people were fighting for LJP tickets. Isn't it a risky gamble? At what point do you say JDU's loss is not our loss? It's a very risky gamble for NDA as a whole. Uh, right from the beginning, early surveys caught the fact that the BJP voter was not very enthusiastic about voting for JDU candidates where the JDU has been allotted the seat mm. and vice versa. So it's a strategy, as when I said, you know, which uh, may not really work out, you know, may backfire. At the end of it, you might not be able to prop up Chirag Paswan sufficiently and you uh, may end up, uh, you know, ensuring that the RJD and its uh, allies uh, are able to win those seats. Very risky, but this is something that we have to watch. Okay. But the idea of the BJP right from the beginning <coughs> was to become the senior partner in the NDA right from the beginning. Right. The BJP has been trying it for a long time. The BJP has and its leaders have a very long memory. They do not forgive. They do not you know, forget. They would not forgive and forget what Nitish Kumar said about its leader, Mr. Modi, right throughout uh, the NDA days. Let's not forget the fact that there was a time when Nitish Kumar did not allow Mr. Modi to campaign in Bihar. There was that infamous incident when the BJP National Executive was meeting in Patna right. and Nitish Kumar cancelled the dinner at the last minute. Of course, there was 
reciprocity from the other side also. Mr. Modi in the 2009 parliamentary elections very smartly went in Ludhiana, went to the dais and suddenly pulled up Nitish Kumar's hand and waved it in a, in a joint strategy, you know, that both of them are together. So they have not been able to forgive and forget any of the animosity which is there and I think, you know, it has reflected in the campaign. It is not going to help either of the parties. And it's been a slow process, but uh, it could be that even if whether they win or not is one matter, but within the alliance, BJP will end up uh, as the a bigger party, as the big brother now. Uh, and, and like Nilanjan said, from 2013 to now reach to this point, there has to be some amount of satisfaction in the BJP leadership about that. See, Bo, I, would, uh, uh, I would think a bit differently. In the sense, if you see from 2013, of course, as uh, Nilanjan was saying, uh, there was a situation where Mr. Modi uh, on the dais uh, pulled up uh, Nitish Kumar's hand and that hand of unity uh, became kind of hand of divergence. And uh, uh, But from there on, Nitish Kumar realized that he was on a suicidal path. He won only two parliamentary seats in Bihar. Mm. He thought and then he started talking about Sangh Mukh Bharat when Modi was talking, uh, uh, Congress Mukt Bharat. And he thought he was going to be pissed as pole position vis-a-vis -vis Narendra Modi. And media hyped Nitish Kumar as future prime ministerial candidate. Correct. Because he seemed to be getting everything right, right rhetoric, right matching words, right kind of persona, again, chief minister of a state, and also somebody who <coughs> also had a governance uh, plan to his credit. Subsequently, when uh, he joined hands with uh, Lalu Yadav, and then that was the time when BJP realized that Nitish Kumar actually <coughs> is not kind of bargainer, hard bargainer as they thought he was. Mm. I tell you why. Because BJP was senior partner in Bihar vis-a-vis -vis Samta Party and subsequently with JDU. When JDU was formed, Samta Party transformed into JDU. And then uh, in 2005 uh, assembly elections, Mr. Radwani unilaterally in consultation with Pramod Mahajan and Arun Jaitley, not so much with Vajpayee. Vajpayee, of course, his nod was Mainly Arun Jaitley. Uh, uh, yeah, required. So they unilaterally decided to have Nitish Kumar as chief ministerial uh, candidate. So much so that there was much heartburn in JDU and also in the BJP. And uh, But from there on, Nitish Kumar started barring it very hard because the kind of equations he had with Vajpayee and Advani. Correct. Now, to turn it to 2017, uh, yeah. when Nitish Kumar again came to NDA side, because he was finding it very hard to come to terms with Tejasvi, Tej Pratap and Lalu Yadav, who was out. Yeah, he was losing day. control there as well. Yeah. So, he came back to the NDA. And then BJP realized that Nitish Kumar fought on 100 seats, RJD on 100 seats. And it was Nitish Kumar who made Congress fight on 50 seats because he wanted to somehow contain RJD also. So this time BJP was sure as to how many seats they have to give it to the JDU. And notionally, it was agreed 50-50 terms. But from there on, there was a realization that Nitish Kumar is slipping away, his, uh, his kind of popularity is slipping away. Yeah. I have a feeling that uh, with that kind of realization in the BJP leadership, they stuck to Nitish Kumar for two reasons. A, their uh, Samta Party, Akali Dal and Sif Sena were their original allies. Two of them had already parted with, Maharashtra example is uh, for everybody to see. Nitish Kumar had done <coughs> earlier, but then Nitish Kumar gone back and then he came back. Therefore, people call him Paltu Ram. And then Akali Dal suddenly made that sudden announcement that uh, on farm bills, sub something was supported in the government and earlier on various podiums had, uh, had gone out. So, with this kind of situation, BJP was placed in a situation whereby it had to support Nitish Kumar. And last time it had realized that uh, you are part of the government and suddenly what are you going to say against the incumbent even if you go to the poll separately. About Chirag Paswan, uh, Chirag Paswan was playing a, I don't know what kind of game and what kind of game was being played through Chirag Paswan by the BJP. Yeah. Because <coughs> people, he was uh, essentially looking at rebound votes of uh, JDU, people who did not uh, want to vote, vote for, for JDU, yeah. but also did not want to vote for RJD. 
as a bad alternate. And uh, that was not, I do not think that was a combination whereby that was, that vote, vote percentage was so high that could have given Chirag Paswan an edge to win by himself okay. or his rebels to win by himself. So suddenly this become a very interesting mm -hmm. election. And uh, the gentleman who was there for yeah. that TikTok, uh, yeah. morning walker, morning jogger, uh, not a typical Bihari, uh, very articulate and smart, uh, very legend person. But he articulated few things very well. A, when he said Nitish Kumar in his last, like, in his last speech, when he said ki, I am taking this thing, ye mera akhri chunao hai, if he had said this thing few months ago, then maybe I would have thought he would gain some sympathy votes. This has happened before in politics. People knew ki ye unka akhri chunao hai, rai izbar jitwa ado, unko iske baad dekhenge. In this case, uh, and that too in Simanchal, where polarization factor was getting very high, and last time also I was talking right. about his last statement <coughs> going against uh, Yogi Adityanath. Uh, perhaps he was just putting his own record straight and perhaps talking to his own conscience uh, in that sense. So uh, Nitish Kumar's strategy and BJP somehow uh, okay, you know, you, since you raised that, let me just get in a reaction from Mr. Om Prakash Setu, spokesperson for the JDU. Good morning to you, Mr. Setu. Thank you for joining us. Uh, most of the exit polls don't paint a very good picture for the JDU. Is it going to be a case where not just you lose your, uh, uh, your, your position in the government, being in power, but you also lose being the bigger party within your own alliance? देखिए सबसे पहले आदरणीय नीतीश कुमार जी ने जो बिहार में काम किया है और काम के आधार पर हमने चुनाव में लिया था और नीतीश कुमार जी के साथ जो महिला वोटरों की जो रुझान रही है शुरू से यानी 2005 से लगातार उन्होंने महिलाओं के प्रति जो उन्होंने काम किया वो महिला सशक्तिकरण में जो पंचायती रिजर्वेशन पचास परसेंट का आरक्षण हो या पैंतीस परसेंट नौकरियों में आरक्षण हो यानी तमाम तरह की जो महिलाओं की मांग जो थी शराबी को लेकर ऐसी तमाम जो है वो महिलाएं वोटर जो है वो आदरणीय नीतीश कुमार जी के साथ रही है और आप देखे होंगे कि जो अभी 2020 में जो चुनाव हुआ है उसमें महिला वोटर बढ़ चढ़ के अपना हिस्सा लिया है और अभी तो एग्जिट पोल आने वाले हैं और जो अभी आए हैं उस पर मैं पूरी तरह से ये को मैं नकार भी नहीं सकता हूँ और नहीं मैं पूर्ण रूप से विश्वास कर सकता हूँ लेकिन आदरणीय नीतीश कुमार जी की जो गवर्नमेंट है आप देखिएगा की अप्रोक्स एक से पैंतीस सीटें हमें आएगी और पूर्ण बहुमत के साथ हम सरकार अपनी बनाएंगे और आपने जो देखा होगा कि नीतीश कुमार जी ने जो बिहार में विकास किया है और ये लोग जो अदर्स पार्टी जो लोग हैं अभी आपके यहाँ एक मीरज नाव के माध्यम से हम एक व्यक्ति का रिएक्शन सुन रहे थे उन्होंने बताया कि पुनः जंगल राज की ओर बिहार आ सकता है और किस तरह का परसेप्शन अभी से ही बनना शुरू हो गया है लोगों के बीच में तो अभी तो रिजल्ट आने बाकी है लेकिन आम लोगों की जो धारणा है वो बिल्कुल दो 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 हजार से लेकर दो हजार पांच के बीच जो धारणा रही है कि यानी कि क्राइम क्राइम को लेकर किस तरह से बिहार जाना जाता था बिहार के बारे में लोगों को कहलाना बिहारी कहलाना एक अपमान का विषय था बिहारी कहलाना आदरणीय नीतीश कुमार जी ने बिहारी कहलाना एक स्वाभिमान का विषय बनाया और जिस तरह से आप बिजली के सेक्टर में देखिएगा हेल्थ के सेक्टर में देखिएगा तमाम इतने जितने भी सेक्टर है इंटरनली क्या है जेडीयू पार्टी के अंदर थॉट प्रोसेस की क्या ऐसा लग रहा है की जो चिराग पासवान को वोट कतर की तरह पोजिशन किया गया उससे जो है पूरे इंडिया अलायंस को नुकसान हुआ देखिए ये लोग कहीं ना कहीं एक तरह से बिहार बिहारी भाषा में वोट पटवा कहा जाता है ये लोग वोट पटवा की स्थिति में रहेंगे और आप ओवरऑल देखिएगा इन लोग को अभी सर्वे के माध्यम से आपके यहाँ देख रहे हैं कि सेवन परसेंट इनको वोट मिला है लेकिन आप ओवरऑल जब देखिएगा तो दो सौ विधानसभा में हम लोगों ने दो में लीड लिया था अगर आप इनको माइनस भी कर देते हैं तो मेरी पोजिशन जो है यानी की जे बीजेपी हम और वी पार्टी की वो कहीं ना कहीं वन फोर्टी के आसपास में सीटें आएंगी मुझे मुझे पूर्ण विश्वास है और जो हम लोग की जो पार्टी की जो इंटरनल जो कोर कमिटी का जो सर्वे है उसमें आपको उस चीज को मैं आपके पास बता रहा हूँ
नहीं मैं मैं समझ नहीं पाई जो इंटरनल सर्वे में आपकी पार्टी में क्या दिख रहा है बिल्कुल हमारी सरकार बन रही है और पूर्ण बहुमत के साथ सरकार बनेगी जो जो लोग एग्जिट पोल को आपने देखा होगा कि 2000 जो 2015 की जो एग्जिट पोल आई थी हाँ। उसमें एनडीए की गवर्नमेंट बना रहे थे आप लोगों ने जो एग्जिट पोल आया था 2010 में उसमें भी एक दो बना रहे थे क्या कहलाते हैं महागठबंधन की उस समय सरकार बना रहे थे लेकिन जब जब आया एग्जिट पोल का जो नतीजा चुनाव परिणाम जब आए तो उसमें देखे की आपने क्या कहला था उस समय में महागठबंधन की सरकार बनी दो में एनडीए की सरकार बनी तो एग्जिट पोल को मुझे पूर्ण विश्वास नहीं एग्जिट पोल आप ही बताइए कि साठ हजार लोगों के पास आपने सैंपल लेते हैं पूरे बिहार चुनाव में यहाँ पे बारह से तेरह करोड़ मतदाता है यानी टू फोर्टी सिक्स यानी दो सौ छियालीस व्यक्ति का आपने सर्वे लेते हैं और जहाँ पे एक विधानसभा में तीन लाख से अधिक मतदाता होते हैं ठीक है तीन लाख मतदाताओं का क्या दो आदमी भविष्य तय कर सकता है क्या ठीक है चलिए हम ये मान लेते हैं कि कभी कभी एग्जिट पोल्स भी गलत हो जाते हैं इसीलिए ये बहुत ज्यादा जरूरी हो जाता है जानना कि पार्टी पार्टी इसका अपना इंटरनल आंकड़े और एस्टिमेट किया है विनय यू वांटेड टू मेक अ नहीं नहीं मैं ओम प्रकाश जी से एक सवाल पूछना चाह रहा था ये सवाल ओम प्रकाश जी मैं अभी आपसे पूछ सकता हूँ क्योंकि अभी साढ़े सात बजाय कल या परसों एक बार दोबारा हम लोग बातचीत करेंगे तो दोबारा पूछेंगे मुझे बताइए चुनाव के नतीजे आने के बाद ढाई बजे तीन बजे के बाद आज दोपहर में आपको पूरी उम्मीद है बीजेपी आपके साथ ही रहेगी अपने एमएलए को बस में बैठा के कहीं ले तो नहीं जाएंगे आप बिहार के बाहर बिल्कुल नहीं हमारा बसें का इंतजाम तो नहीं किया है ना आपने कुछ दिनों को छोड़ दीजिए तो सत्रह सालों का हमारा पुराना अलायंस है बीजेपी के साथ हम लोगों ने 2005 में जब चुनाव लड़ा था तो उस समय भी वन के आसपास में था दो में लड़ा तो दो सीटें आई हमारे साथ तो मुझे बीजेपी के साथ पुराना रिश्ता है हाल के दिनों में कुछ दिन को छोड़ दीजिए तो हमारा और बीजेपी का पुराना संबंध रहा है पुराना कहा रहा है सर 2015 में भी आप साथ नहीं थे तो, तो नया संबंध बता रहा हूँ मैं 2005 बताए 2010 बताए 2015 हजार पंद्रह कह रहे हैं हाल का थोड़ा सा छोड़ दीजिए <laughs> तो तो मतलब हमारा बीजेपी के साथ पुराना अलायंस है और बत... आप देखिएगा कि पूर्ण बहुमत के साथ हमारी सरकार बनेगी बट ये बताइए वो प्रकाश जी नीतीश जी ने तो बोला उनका आखिरी चुनाव है उन्होंने उन्होंने किस संदर्भ में कहा इसको लेकर इंटरप्रेट करने वाले लोग कर रहे हैं लेकिन आदरणीय नीतीश कुमार जी ने कहा कि यह चुनाव की आखिरी दिन है यह अंत सभा है अंत भला तो सब भला अब लोग क्या क्या तरह से किस तरह का परसेप्शन बनाते हैं अब ये तो खुद स्वतंत्र है अब मैं डिबेट पर बैठा हूं और मैं कुछ अपने तरफ से वक्तव्य दे दूं तो इसको लेकर इंटरप्रेट करना ओम प्रकाश जी मैं क्या सोचू और आप क्या सोचे समझे वो बात तो अलग ही है नीतीश जी ने जिस दिन कहा और जिस तरीके से कहा उ, उस समय मतदाता ने वोटर ने क्या सोचा वो इम्पोर्टेंट है अगर वोटर को ये लगा कि वो इमोशनल होके कह रहे हैं कि ये मेरा आखिरी इलेक्शन है और अंत भला तो सब मिला जिता दो तो वो अलग इंटरप्रिटेशन तो वही एक मा, मायने रखता है वही एक काउंट होता है बाकी हम आप स्टूडियो में क्या बोले उसका तो आपने सही कहा वेलकम बैक इन अबाउट 15-20 minutes from now, the voting the counting will officially begin. We don't know by what time we will have any clarity on who is winning the Bihar election, but we will of course keep you posted with the minute-by-minute minute updates as the numbers come in. This is a special broadcast here on Mirror Now this Tuesday morning for Bihar SM elections. Of course, we'll also get to the results of the bypolls that are happening across the state. But let me just go back to our panelists uh, uh, and also. right now say good morning to neha joshi of the bjp joining us right now neha joshi uh exit polls aside since the polling came to an end on saturday what's the internal calculation and estimation how much is the bjp getting Yeah, we're not able to hear you right now. I... Now? Yeah, now we can. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, I was saying that you know um, the the NDA is very clear. There's going to be an NDA government in Bihar once again. Uh, uh, the exit polls, uh, uh, some exit polls have uh, uh, you know predicted a very close contest. Uh, others uh, have shown an NDA win. Some are giving uh, RJD an edge. Uh, however we are very clear you know we've had our own uh, internal surveys we are very clear that there's going to be an nda government again and uh, you know i'm not a uh, i'm not from one of those parties who dis the exit polls completely so uh, yes uh, you know the the fact that they were neck to neck uh, was a little bit strange to us 
but but like again, you know, it's, this is uh, this is democracy. The people uh, cast their votes uh, based based on uh, various issues, uh, and also exit polls aren't exact polls. So you know, we've seen several times in the past when exit polls have got it wrong. And <coughs> for Bihar, I would say. Uh, that, you know, uh, Bihari voter is supposed to be a very nuanced voter. In fact, for the first time, uh, you know, today we use the words, uh, uh, the phrase silent voter all over the country. But uh, I'd like to uh, mention it here that the term Chuppa voter actually originated from Bihar because the Bihar, Bihari voter was so nuanced and so sophisticated in terms of where they wanted to cast their vote that they... Uh, you know, would say something and do something. So, else. so tell me then. You know, for, again, I, I'll, I'll try my letter. Tell me then. Give me a number. If you don't want to give a number for BJP, give me a number for NDA, and tell me where is it that the exit polls are getting it wrong? Where is the silent voter that they've missed? No, and tell me uh, why uh, speculate that we're going to have the result in a little bit? I'm telling you that there's going to be a clear majority for the NDA. Uh, uh, you know, uh, a lot of parties try to, in fact, uh, ride on the NDA wave and uh, try to create a separate narrative. Uh, but uh, that's not going to happen. NDA is going to get a clear majority uh, this evening and Nitish Kumar is going to be the chief minister again. Neha, just one, one, one more thing. Before you joined yeah. us and we were having this conversation in the studios and we also spoke mm -hmm. uh, with the JDU representative, the, the uh, LJP factor... How is BJP now viewing it now that the elections are done, the voting is done? Um, I think the BJP was very clear. In fact, you know, uh, I was watching on some channel where a spokesperson, uh, uh, actually an analyst was saying that, you know, the BJP wasn't clear on, it didn't uh, come out clear on, you know, where it stood on Chirag Paswan and LJP. I think, uh, right, uh, you know, right, starting from the PM uh, uh, in his uh, election speech, he said that we have nothing to do with the NGP as far as the Bihar elections are concerned. They're not part of the NDA. They decided to go their separate way. Uh, so we've been very clear on this. And I don't think LJP is, and I, as the exit polls have shown, I don't think LJP is going to be a big factor in the elections. Uh, it was, uh, you know, NDA or the Mahakat Bandhan. And we are absolutely sure that NDA is going to have an edge. Yeah, Neha, I have a very specific question for you. You know, uh, the Indian, yeah. uh, ironically, uh, the Indian Railways has the exact same concept that the Prime Minister mentioned, which is the double engine ki sarkar. Indian Railways runs a lot of trains that have two engines, but they also follow a model which is called the push pull. One engine is actually pushing the train, the other is pulling it. Was Nitish Kumar pushing or was it pulling? Which engine was he? A very interesting question. Uh, you know, this double engine ki analogy. Jo hai. Uh, ye istemal ki jati hai so now, you know, I'm from Uttarakhand and you know, we constantly say here that double engine is the hai. And our uh, limited uh, application of this analogy, hai, it means that you know, both the engines are pulling uh, the train in one direction only. So that was a very clever question. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and a clever <laughs> evasion <laughs> there of your question when <laughs> Neha <laughs> has successfully dodged that question uh, uh, in, in answering of whether Nitish was pulling or pushing. Uh, well, uh, what remains to be seen, of course, is to what extent um, do the numbers work out and how much Nitish Kumar is able to bring on the table, whether uh, it uh, benefits the BJP at all or will he be the factor that becomes a big hurdle for them to form the next government. Thank you so much, Neha Joshi, and also to Om Prakash Setu for joining us. Our panelists, of course, continue to stay with us, but I need to slip into a very short break right now so that we can all get set and come right back just a few minutes before the counting officially begins and then it's going to be a hectic few hours as the numbers begin to trickle in from all ends. Stay with us here on Mirana.